We continue now at the top of Daf Lamed Vov Amid Aleph Maseches Bab Metzia. This is Bab Metzia Daf Thirty Six A. And the previous Amar of Yirmiyah was referring to our Mishnah. Our Mishnah says that you have a case of a socher, and then the socher goes ahead and he lends out the animal to a shoel. And Rav Yirmiya said that sometimes if they take a shvua, let's say it's a false shvua, they can both bring a carbon chatos. And Rav Yirmiya continues, Po'amim sheshnei im ba'asham. Sometimes if they take a false shvua, they can both bring a carbon asham. Po'amim sheha socher b'chatos v'hashoel b'asham. Sometimes the socher will be bringing a carbon chatos and the shoel will be bringing a carbon asham. And Po'amim sheha socher b'asham v'hashoel b'chatos. Sometimes the socher will be bringing a carbon asham and the shoel will be bringing a carbon chatos. And Rashi explains, Shnei im ba'asham. Sometimes they both both bring an asham, that means im nishbu la shekar v'hayu niskarim bishvuasim. This is in contrast to when they both bring a carbon chatos. In a case where they both bring a carbon asham, it's when they swear falsely and they're profiting by their false shvua. Lahakil piron me'alem to make it that they have to pay less money. So then kfiras mamon hizu. Then it's considered like a false shvua that is a denial of money. That's really the difference between the two kinds of cases. Sometimes you can just take a false shvua, but you're not profiting, so to speak, off that false shvua. That's not considered kfiras mamon. That's when you bring a carbon chatos. But over here, where there's a kfiras moment involved, where they're going to be paying less based on the false shvua, the carbon shvua shall have asham. So then, the carbon shvua that is brought as a carbon asham, that's what we're talking about when we're saying sheshneim asham, ayel ben beishonim, dechsev vehevi es asham, ayel tamim berkach lekas of shkolim, vu asham gazelos. Again, that's the asham that's referred to in the pasuk, and that's what we call the asham gazelos. And the Gemara continues, Hakates that house so Kfiras Maman Asham, as we just said in Rashi, if the Shvu is a denial of money, so then you bring a carbon asham, but Bitois Fasaim, but if it is simply a false oath, but it's not considered Kfiras Mamun, it's not considered a denial of money, so then it's a chatos, then you bring a carbon chatos. And the Gemara now elaborates. Pnet Pamim Shashneim Bechatos. Sometimes they both bring a carbon chatos, that would be a svalos. Kagon Shemesa Kedarka, for example, the animal dies on its own, that's considered to be an onus, so really they're both putter anyways. The Amru Nensa, but then they say that there was an onus. Instead of saying Mesa Kedarka, they swear falsely that it was an onus. Now, Socher de Bein Kach Uvein Kach Mifter, the Socher either way would have been Potter. So, Bein Kach Uvein Kach Mifter Potter, either way he'd be Potter. So, Bechatas, he brings a carbon Chatas because, again, his Shvua over here was not a denial of money. He was Potter anyway. And Shoal, when it comes to Shoal, de Bein Kach Uvein Kach Uvein Mechaev, he would have been Chaev in any case. He's Chaev on an onus. He's Chaev on Mesa Kedarko. So, Bechatas. So, he brings a carbon Chatas as well. Sometimes they both bring a Carbon Asham, Kagon Shenignava, let's say it was stolen, Viamru, and they say Mesa Machmas Malacha. They say that it died while work was being done with the animal, which essentially exempts them both. The Tarvayo Kakafri Mamona. So they are both denying money in that case. To Hamachaivi, because really they should be Chaiv because it was stolen. The Kapatri Nafshayu, and then they're making themselves exempt through this false Shvua, and that's why they both bring a Carbon Asham. Socher Bechatos Vishol Biasham. Then you can have a case where the renter brings a Carbon Chatos, the Shol brings an Asham. Kagon Shemesa. Mesa Kedarka, for example, it died a natural death. But they say that it died because of the work. So the Socher would have been Potter either way. So he's Chayev a Karvan Chatos. Shoal de Mechayev be Mesa Kedarka, but a Shoal who would have been Chayev if he would have said the truth that it was Mesa Kedarka, a Kapater Nafshe, be Mesa Machmas Melacha, but then he exempts himself by saying it died during the work. So Ba'asham, so he brings a Karvan Asham. And Socher Ba'asham, Vashoal Bechatos, you can have a case where the Socher brings a Karvan Asham and the Shoal brings a chatos, Kagon Shenignava, for example, it was stolen, Viamro Mesa Kedark, and they say that it died a natural death. Socher Hud de Mechayev Begneva Viaveda, the Socher would have been Chayev had he said the truth that it was Gneva Viaveda, the Kapater Nafshe be Mesa Kedarka, and he's exempting himself by saying it died naturally. But Asham, so he's going to bring an Asham, therefore. Shoal, but when it comes to Shoal, the Venkach, Venkach, Yuve Mechayev, he would have been Chayev in any case, so Bechatos, he's going to bring a carbon Chatos. And Rashi explains then, so again, a case where it died a natural death, but then they claim that there was an onus, they list them, that there were bandits, v'nishbu shakach, and they take a shvua that that is the case. And Rashi here points out, why is the shoal taking a shvua if he's paying anyway? Even though a shoal pays for onsim, mashbiyano, so he still does have to take a shvua, kidder avuna, like Ravuna said, shvua she'ena birshu, so the person has to take a shvua that it's not in his possession, the chayshin an shem anas an enav, because we're afraid maybe he wanted the object, maybe he wanted the item, v'nishba shenen so ve'ena birshu, so, and then he takes a shvua that there was an onus and it's not as a rishus. So that's why you have a situation where even though he's not exempt, he's still going to take a shvua. And again, that's a situation where they both bring a carbon chatos because they're not changing their monetary obligation, but they are taking a false shvua.
And the Gemara continues, Maika Mashmalan, what exactly is Rabbi Yirmiya teaching us? Rashi explains, Maika Mashmalan, Rabbi Yirmiya. What's Rabbi Yirmiya teaching us with this? Mishnai Yishlema saying, Bishavuas, this is just Mishnai and Shavuas. Hamishana Mechova, Lechova, Miptor, Liptor, Umiptor, Lechova, Potter. In all these cases, if let's say you change from being obligated to being obligated in a different fashion, or you exempt anyway, exempt in a different fashion, or you exempt and then you make yourself chayv, in all of those cases, Potter, Miyashim Gazelus. You don't bring the carbon Ashim again, you're just going to bring the carbon Chatos for the false Shavua. But liftor, But if you're exempting yourself from a monetary obligation, so then chayv, you're chayv in Hashem Gazelo. So basically, it's a mission of what exactly is Rabbi Yirmiya teaching us. And the Gemara continues, Le'afuke mid Rabbi Ami. He's coming to exclude the position of Rabbi Ami. Do'amar, because Rabbi Ami says, Kol osa. If the judges are the one that make you take a shvua, so ain chayav in Olea Misham Shvuas Bitoi, then there is no Shvuas Bitoi in that situation. Shenemar, as it says in the Pasuk, O nefesh kisi shava levate bisvasayim, kisi shava meyatsma, means to say, that the person takes the oath on his own, meaning to say, Rabbi Ami says that carbon that you bring for a shvuas bito is only if you take the oath on your own, not if the judges impose it. Kamash malon deloka Rabbi Ami. That's what Rabbi Yirmi is teaching. He's teaching not like Rabbi Ami over here. The judges are imposing the shvua, and still there's going to be a carbon that is brought. So that's the chiddush of Rabbi Yirmiya. And the Gemara continues, Itmar, it was stated, the following, Machlokas Amoroim, Shomer Shemaser Shomer. let's say a Shomer gives it to another Shomer, Rav Amar Potter, Rav says the person is exempt, Rav Yochanan Amar Chayv, and Rav Yochanan says he is Chayv. And Rashi explains, Rav Amar Potter, Mikol Mashoya Niftar, meaning, from everything that he would have been Potter, Im Shomro Hu Atzmo, had he watched it, meaning to say, let's say you have a situation of a Shomer Chinam, so a Shomer Chinam is exempt from everything except for Pshia, so if he gives it to another Shomer, that's going to be the same exact rule, is going to apply to that Shomer Chinam, he'll continue to be exempt from everything except for negligence, that's the opinion of Rav, and Chayev, according to Rav Yochanan, the Shomer that gives it to another Shomer is Chayev Afilu Ba'onsen, the fact that he gave it to another Shomer actually makes him Chayev beyond what he was initially chayiv. Now he's chayiv in everything. He's even chayiv in onsim. And the Gemara continues, Amar Abaya Abaya says, Letaime de Rav, according to Rav's opinion, that a Shomer Shamasu the Shomer is Potter, Lomi boy Shomer Chinam Shamasu the Shomer Sacher. We don't even need to say it by a Shomer Chinam that gives it to a Shomer Sacher. Diluye al yil Shmiraso, because he's actually improving the level of Shmira, because a Shomer Sacher is responsible for more than a Shomer Chinam. So of course the Shomer Chinam is going to continue to be Potter in that situation from things that he was Potter on before. Ela Afilu Shomer Sacher Shamasu the Shomer Chinam. But even if a Shomer Sacher gives it to a Shomer Chinam, so technically he's lowering the level of Shmira because he's giving it to somebody who's not as obligated as he is, but still Potter, he's still going to be Potter in that case. My time, what's the reason? Because he gave it to somebody who has Das, and that is considered to be sufficient. And the Gemara continues, Now according to the opinion of Rabbi Yochanan, We of course don't need to say by a Shomer Sacher that gives it to a Shomer Chinam that that individual, that that Shomer Sacher is going to be Chayev, because there he's lessening the level of Shmir, he's giving it to a Shomer Chinam who has less general responsibility. Even if a Shomer Chinam gives it to a Shomer Sacher, so that he's increased the level of Shmir, still Chayv, he's still Chayv, meaning to say it's Chayv and everything, even owns him. Because the owner can say to him, I don't want my deposit to be with someone else. I specifically wanted you to watch it and not somebody else. And the Gemara continues, Amar of Chister of Chister says, Hadarav, that which Rav said, meaning Rav said that a Shomer Shemasa a Shomer is Potter, Lav Befeir Shitmar, he didn't say that explicitly. Ela Michlala, rather it's inferred from a case which he paskined, Dehanu Ginoi, Dechol Yoma Have Mifkidim Arayu, Gabod Aisabsa. There were these gardeners every day they would deposit their spades by an elderly woman. Yomachad, one day, Afkidinu Legabechad Minayu, they deposited it by one of them. They gave to one of the gardeners that he should take all of them. Shama Kola Behilula, he saw that there were sounds coming from a cellar. Celebration. Nafak Azel. He went. Uh, he went out and Afkidinu Legaba. Dahisabs and instead he gave over the spades to that same elderly woman. Ad Azel Viasa Ignev Morayu. And by the time they returned, so those spades were stolen. Azel Akami Deravi came before Ravu Patre and Rav said Potter. And so it was inferred from this Psak Halacha that Shomer Shamasul Shomer is Potter. Man the Chaza, the person who saw this incident, Savar Misham Shomer Shamasul Shomer Potter thought that Rav was saying that a Shomer gives to another Shomer is Potter. That's what seems to be happening in this case. But the Gemara says. It's not true. That's not what that's not what Rav was saying. Shani Hasam, it's different over there. The Cholio Manami Inu Gufayu Gabod Aisabsa have a Mifkadulahu because it was different in that case because every day every all of those gardeners would give it to that elderly woman and so therefore they can't claim they didn't want it to be Biad Acher because this was somebody that they gave it to all the time.
And the Gemara continues, Yosef Rabbi Ami, Amar Lo Lohashmaiti, Rabbi Ami was sitting and saying over this Machlokas Amoroim between Rav and Rabbi Yochanan in terms of Shomer, Shemosr, Le Shomer. Eisve Rabbi Abba Bar Memel, Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Abba Bar Mamel, Es Rabbi Ami, the following question from our Mishnah. Hasocher Parah Mechavero Vishila Laachar, our Mishnah says if somebody rents a cow from his friend and lends it to somebody else, Vamesa Kedarka, and it dies naturally, Yishava Hasocher Shemesa Kedarka, the renter takes an oath that it died naturally, Vasho El Meshalem Lusocher, and the borrower then pays the Socher. And so the Gemara says, Vimisa, now if it's true what Rabbi Yochanan said, that a Shomer Shemoser, Le Shomer is Chayiv, so Lemole, let him say to him, Ein Ritzoni Shiei Pekdoni Beracher, I don't want that my Pekadon should be with somebody else, meaning the owner can say to the renter, what are you doing, giving my item, giving my cow to somebody else, therefore you should be responsible for this, because you should be responsible even for Onsim, and so it seems that this mission is a support for Rav, that Shomer Shemoser, Le Shomer is Potter, and the Gemara says, Amar Leh, he said back to him, Hacha B'mayaskin, and here what are we talking about in our Mishnah, lo haba that the owners actually gave the renter permission to lend it out, and so therefore, of course, it's okay for the renter to lend it out. But the Gemara says, if that's the case, so then, when the showil is paying for this animal, he shouldn't pay to the renter, he should pay to the original owner, because essentially he's borrowing from the original owner. The owner is the one that gave the renter permission to lend it out. It's as if the owner himself is lending it out to the showil. And the Gemara says to that, that the owner said to the renter that if you want to, if you want to lend it out, you can do that, meaning to say, it's not really the owner that's lending it out, it's the owner giving permission to the renter to lend it out. And the Gemara continues, Mesiv Rami Barcham, and Rami Barcham asks a question from a Mishnah coming up, Hamafkid Mos Eitzel Chaver, if somebody deposits money by his friend, Tzoron Vivshilan Lachorov, if the person binds up the money in a cloth and he throws it behind him, or Misorin Levno Vito Hakatanim, if he gives it over to his son or his daughter who's a minor, or Vinoal Bifneim Shalok Karoy, if he locks it in an inappropriate fashion, he doesn't lock it up well. In all of these cases, Chayev, in all of the all of these cases, the Shomer is Chayev, Shalosh Shomer Kedera HaShomer, because he didn't watch it in the way that a Shomer is supposed to watch something. And so the Gemara says, Time with the Katanim. Now, the reason why it's problematic is because he gave it over to his children who are minors. Hagadolim, but if he gave it over to his children who are adults, Potter, he would be Potter. So again, this is a question under Biochon and Amai. Why is he Potter? Nameley, Ein Ritzoni, Shepik, Toni, Biarachar. The owner should be able to say to the Shomer, I don't want you to give it to somebody else. I wanted you to watch it and not someone else. It seems to be a proof for Rav. And the Gemara says, Oh, my Rav. Rav says, Kol HaMafkid, anybody who deposits an item, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video, on Daf Lamid Vav Amid Beis.